Hi, Caleb with Brownhouse here. And in today's video, we're gonna be going through basic maintenance on your Ruger 1022 or your Brownhouse BRN 22 or pretty much any of the Ruger 1022 clones out there. All right, so uh, with that being said, let's just jump right into it. Obviously, first thing you wanna do is to make sure your firearm is indeed unloaded. Uh, if you have a magazine in it, go ahead, remove that magazine, pull your bolt back and visually inspect your chamber, all right? Now, once you're sure that the firearm is indeed unloaded, uh, we can go through the basic disassembly. So the great thing about this, all you're gonna need really is one tool. And uh, depending on you know, how, how you have it set up, we'll, we'll get into that in detail in a bit. But first thing you need to do, if you look at the bottom of your stock here, right in front of your magazine well, you'll have a screw. Uh, some of you may have a uh, slotted screw in there. Some of you may have a Allen screw like this one here. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and grab the appropriate wrench, which is not that one. All right. And we're going to go ahead and unscrew it. Now, in most cases, once you get it unscrewed from the receiver, it'll still be retained in the stock. So if you want to take this screw all the way out, you need to pull it and keep screwing. But honestly, uh, you don't need to. Once it's out of the receiver and it moves back and forth just like that right there, uh, you can leave it. That's good. All right. And then from here, we can now pull our barreled action out of the stock. Now, the important thing right here is to make sure our safety is in the middle position. So right in between on and off. Uh, reason being, because right here, it'll hit the stock. If you push it the other way, it'll still hit the stock. So it has to be in that middle position, just like so. And then all you need to do is lift up on your barrel and it'll come out the stock, just like that. All right. Now, if you have a factory Ruger set up, uh, chances are your buffer and your pins are trying to fall out at this point. That's okay. You can go ahead and remove those. Uh, ours right here, we have, we have aftermarket pins and aftermarket buffer, uh, and they're a bit tighter of a fit, so they're staying in. So we're going to go ahead and need a punch to remove those. If you have a setup like this, you'll probably need a punch as well. Um, but if you have a factory Ruger one, chances are they're just falling out. If not, just take a small punch and just push them out. You shouldn't even need a hammer, honestly. Uh, so what I'm going to do at this point is go ahead and knock these out. All right, so we'll just grab a bench block. You don't need a bench block. You can use a block of wood, you know, whatever you have on hand. And we'll just grab a punch here. And we'll just knock these pins out. And as I mentioned, factory Ruger setup. If you just kind of tilt it and shake it, they'll, they'll typically fall out. All right, so once you remove this front and rear bottom pin here, your trigger group will come right out, okay? And then in order to get our bolts out, we have to make sure that buffer comes out. And this one is one of the um, rubberized ones. So they tend to be in there pretty good. So we'll just knock that out real quick. All right, there we go. All right, now we don't need any more tools. And like I said, if you have a factory Ruger set up, the only thing you need is for that stock screw. Okay, so that buffer was preventing the bolt from coming back far enough to be removed. Okay, well, with that buffer gone, obviously we can remove it. In order to do that, what we need to do is pull our charging handle all the way back as far as it'll go. And then take your bolts and lift up on it. What I like to do is take my index finger, put it on that bolt face right there, and just kind of lift up. And it'll come right out just like that. Now, all you need to do is gently let off of that charging handle, and it'll come right out of the receiver. Right, I pulled it right out of that ejection port. And this can stay together, don't, don't try to take this apart. Okay, and for basic maintenance, that's as far apart as you need to go, that's it. All right, so um, honestly, let's just start with the trigger group. All you really need to do with this is just wipe it down. 
that's it. So that hammer right there, just wipe the face of it and do that, uh, do that on safety, because if you're on fire and you accidentally hit that trigger, that hammer's gonna come forward and, and it'll, it'll smack you, right? So I'll just put it on safe, wipe it down. You can lift up your, your ejector will kind of flop around here. You can lift that up, wipe that off as well. All right, and your ejector sits in this little slot right here. We'll just put that back home right there. All right, and that's how it has to be when you reinstall it or else you'll have some issues getting it back together. All right. And once that's just wiped down, we can set that aside. All right, now let's jump over to our bolt. Now your bolt is gonna have your extractor on it, right? Which is this claw right here. That's what pulls your cartridge out the chamber. Okay, and then you're also gonna have your firing pin on top. And that's gonna move back and forth just like that. So what we're gonna do here and if you shoot it a lot, obviously it's gonna get pretty dirty. So what I like to do is take some solvents, uh, such as Hoppy's number nine. I use Hoppy's number nine for almost everything. And I'll just pour a little bit into the cap here. Don't dip your brush into your, your container because then you contaminate everything and it's a, it's a whole thing. So just put a little bit somewhere and we're not gonna pour this cap stuff back into that container either. Don't do that. Once this is used, it's used. All right, so we'll dip our brush in there. And the main areas you really need to get are this face right here. That's where most of your, your fouling and your carbon buildup and stuff like that's gonna be. And we'll just scrub the bottom as well. Just scrub the whole thing. Just look where it's dirty and uh, clean it on off. That's all you really need to do. So we'll scrub that up real good. Now we need to get off as much of this Hoppy's number nine as we can. Just wipe it all down. All right. And this bolt is clean. This is a new bolt, but the inside of this receiver and this barrel is not. So they're, they're still pretty dirty. All right, so we're gonna wipe this down and we'll go through actual, the lubrication of these parts whenever we put everything back together. For now, we're just gonna clean them and set them aside. Uh, same thing with the charging handle and guide rod. Honestly, unless there's like noticeably caked up stuff on there, I don't even hit it with the brush. I'll just wipe it down real good with a rag. And we're just gonna wipe it back and forth here and you can Kind of take your your guide rod assembly and depress it and just kind of look and see, you know, if there's excess of buildup on there. If so, you can actually just kind of take this on a counter or something like that. Push that charging handle down and then use your rag to, to wipe that. And that's a good way to go about doing that. So we'll just set that aside once we got that done. Now we can move on to the really dirty part and that's gonna be the inside of your receiver. So you can see on this one here, I have some oil that's kind of mixing with all that, that carbon buildup, that, that grime uh, getting pretty gross there. And then going up to the face around that chamber is pretty dirty too. So again, I'm gonna take my brush with my Hoppy's number nine or your favorite solvent, which I think Hoppy's number nine is everyone's favorite solvent, right? All right, and we're just gonna scrub. And if you're using like an aerosol or something like that, like a like gun scrubber, um, one of those like heavy degreaser types and you're just blasting it all out, that's perfectly fine. What I like to do if I'm doing that is to take an aerosol oil, like rim oil or something like that, and just spray a really light coat of that on there uh, to kind of rehydrate the metal and everything because that degreaser absolutely sucks everything out of it. And then uh, that's not even like part of my lubrication process. I'll just go ahead and spray everything to get it nice and... I say I use the term rehydrated because that's, I mean, that's what it looks like. All right, and we'll just 
Once we got it scrubbed with our brush, we'll just take our rag and wipe out the inside of our receiver the best we can here. And you don't have to go too crazy on it because we're going to have to wipe it out again and I'll, I'll show you why here. And if you have some, you can also use the uh, like Q-tips and things like that to get in there and kind of help you get those hard to reach areas. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna show you a few different things here. So, actually I'm gonna pull it out and show you real quick. If you have a factory Ruger receiver, yours is not gonna have this hole in the back. This hole uh, is put into this aftermarket Brownells receiver specifically for cleaning this barrel, okay? The reason is because anytime you can, you wanna clean your barrel, you wanna run your brushes, your patches, jags, all that stuff in from the chamber, okay? Whenever you're cleaning your barrel. And that's why we have that hole, so we can just go all the way through the back. On your factory Ruger receiver, obviously you can't get into that chamber area uh, without going in through the front. The reason going in through the front is uh, less desirable is because of your crown. Your crown is this area right here at the end of your muzzle, right? Right where that rifling in your barrel transitions to the face of the barrel. That's the crown. The crown is the last little bit of input your barrel has on that bullet before it leaves. And that is, ex it's extremely important that it's nice and concentric, free of any dings and, and, and just any kind of uh, damage. Because if there's a little ding or a little bit of damage or that edge is rolled over, it will affect your accuracy, no doubt about it. And when you're cleaning, it's easy to damage it, even if you're using brass, because that's such a sharp edge there, uh, it's, easy, it's easy to damage that crown. So I'm gonna start by showing you how to clean it from the muzzle end very carefully, okay? And also, if you have a factory Ruger 1022 receiver and you wanna drill that hole in the back, uh, Brownells actually sells a fixture to help you do that without absolutely ruining it. And maybe maybe we'll do that at some point in the future here. Uh, but just know that it, it does exist and you can convert a Ruger one to have the hole in the back. All right, so, all right, we're just gonna set that aside. I'm dipping the wrong brush here. So I'm just gonna take my 22 caliber brush, okay? This is a this, this is a dewy coated rod, uh, but you can use your favorite cleaning rod. And I put a little bit of hoppies on there. Um, so you can use hoppies, that'll work just fine. Or if you wanna be even more aggressive with the cleaning, I say more aggressive like it's a bad thing, it's definitely not. Um, if you have a really dirty barrel uh, with a lot of lead and stuff like that in there, uh, Bortec makes this rimfire blend specifically for all the nasty stuff those uh, rimfire cartridges can produce. And I'm just gonna put some of that on my brush here. All right, it's dripping on the table, that's okay. And if you're coming in from the muzzle, with every, every time you put it in there, you gotta be very careful. So the brush goes in just fine, right? And the danger area is whenever you start getting to this transition from the brush uh, to the, the actual piece that's holding your bristles, right? Because that's gonna kinda wanna run into that, that muzzle crown there. So, what you need to do is carefully guide it in. Okay, don't go too fast here. And then your next area is where the brush screws on to your rod. Be careful in that area as well. Once you get past those two areas, you can run it all the way in. All right, and there you go. All right, now it's inside of the receiver. So when those bristles, I'll show you here. When these bristles break free of that chamber, they sling stuff all over the inside of the receiver, um, which is why you're gonna have to wipe it out again anyway. All right. And you pull your brush back through. And for the rest of this, let me get this out of here. All right, we'll pull that out. For the rest of this, 
we're gonna go in through the receiver. Okay. And there's no science as to like how many times you have to run it through here. There's no set number that's gonna get your barrel clean. I just like to do probably between seven to 10. And about halfway through, I'll push my brush in just a little bit. Then I'll put some more solvents on there. And you definitely, like I know we did the receiver first and then the barrel. You don't have to do it in that order. You can, you can absolutely do the, the barrel first and then clean the receiver. All right. Now I'm just gonna take a rag, wipe that rod off, unscrew the brush. All right. Now we're gonna screw on our jag, or if you're using a slotted patch holder, you know, whatever you're using, we'll screw that on. Now the first thing I do is I will run a dry patch through there. All right. Push that patch all the way through. And you'll end up with something just like that. All that fouling and lead and all that, that nasty stuff on there. All right, then we'll pull our jag back through, put another patch on. If you're using a slotted uh, tight patch holder, when you push it through, uh, go ahead and pull the patch off and then run it back through empty. And I'll run two, maybe three. We'll look and see how we're doing here. Yeah, uh, two will be fine. So noticeably less stuff on there, right? Uh, so what I'll do at this point is I will take some oil. Let me grab my oil here. Put my patch on the jag. And put the oil on. All right, and we'll run it through. Just like so. And this, uh, this oil, this is the Sons of Liberty Spec 76 oil. It's a really good oil, um, but the like biggest complaint people have with it is that it's not clear. Um, honestly, for me, I'd rather I don't care if it's clear or not. I just care that it's a really good gun oil, right? Um, so you can't see how clean or dirty your barrel is, but honestly, uh, you went from this to this in one patch, so it's a lot cleaner than it was, and it's plenty clean for all intents and purposes. Whenever I'm cleaning a barrel, I never try to get the patch 100% white when it comes out the other end. Um, that's, that's not a big deal. If you spend all day trying to chase that patch, uh, your cleaning your firearm is going to be way more frustrating than it needs to be. It doesn't have to be the patches. The point I'm trying to make here is the patches do not have to come out looking like this. All right, that don't try and chase that. Okay, so with that being said, uh, we ran an oil patch through our barrel. Now it's nice and and lubricated and clean and protected, right? So we're done with the barrel. That's all we need to do. And what you can actually do is take your rag. And just wipe off that crown area, because chances are there's some junk on there from the brush going through, right? And that's nice and clean. All right, now let's just wipe out this receiver again. And 
I'm just cleaning that up there. All right, and that's looking pretty good. Uh, if you notice on the inside of your receiver, there's wear where you can see metal from the anodizing wearing off. Uh, you have a steel bolt rubbing against an aluminum receiver. That's perfectly normal. Don't, don't panic, all right? That's all good. Okay, so that is it for our barrel and receiver assembly. That was super easy, right? Uh, the stock. Stock's basically just going to be all cosmetic stuff. You know, if you've got some dirt on the outside, you know, whatever, you take your brush and scrub it and wipe it off. That's no big deal. Uh, you shouldn't have any fouling or anything like that in the receiver. Now, if you see anything that's that's there, just, just wipe it out. Sometimes there'll be like grass or whatever in there, especially if you're using your gun for hunting. All right. So, uh, let's go through lubrication and reassembly. Really, that's all that's left. And I should also note, uh, you can, if you want to, take the barrel out to clean it. Undo these two screws. Check our build series on how to do all that stuff. But um, the issue there is that if you have an optic, uh, you're probably going to lose zero if you pull this barrel out. Okay? So, keep that in mind. Okay. Now... Uh, the reassembly is the reverse order of the disassembly. So what we're going to do is get this charging handle back in first, all right, and lubrication points on this. So if you look at your charging handle, there's a groove cut in one piece and a step in the other. So this groove, if you lay your receiver upside down, this groove that's cut in there is always going to be facing upwards, right? Because if you look at your bolts, and understanding how everything works and, and fits together is, is key to understanding how to put it back together, right? So I always like to stress that. That groove is clearance for your firing pin on your bolt, because this is going to lay just like this whenever it's inside the firearm, okay? So, all we're going to do is just put a few drops of oil going down the spring on the guide rod here. And whenever we work our action back and forth after the reassembly, this will all get spread out where it needs to be. And I'll just put a little bit of oil going across the top here. And you don't really need to put any on the bottom, especially don't put a lot. I'll just do one little drop right there. All right. Now we can reinsert this into the receiver, which is how we pulled it out. But you need to take note that the tail right here, uh, watch where this tail is going because there's a slot in your receiver specifically for it. It's going to go into that little pocket right there. Okay. And just push your charging handle in all the way like that. Now our bolt, all right, where I'm going to lubricate our bolt, I'm going to put a few drops of oil on the top here, a few drops on this side piece right here, same thing on the opposite side, and some going down the side here. Okay, and then a drop or two on the bottom will be all right. Let's put a few down there. And for the ones on the bottom, I just like to take my finger and just kind of rub them in there. Get that oil nice and spread out. Do the same thing on the main side, the opposite side. Uh, the ones on the post here, you can just kind of leave. You don't need to really rub that too much. All right. Now that your hands are nice and slippery, try to hold on to your gun. And remember how we had to pull that charging handle all the way back to get the bolts out? You need to do the same thing to get it back in. All right. So what I like to do for this is to actually take my index finger, grab the front of that charging handle to help me slide it all the way back. I'll slide it back as far as it'll go and then grab it from the outside, just like this. And then you can take your bolts and just set it straight down into there. And you're gonna have to, once you're at this point right here, the back's kinda in there, Take your index finger again and just kind of manipulate that with the charging handle 
to get it to fall back into place. And you'll feel it snap back into place when it does, just like that. There it went. Then you can let off your charging handle. And now your bolt's reinstalled. Okay? And it's, it may, may take you a few tries to get it. That's okay. You'll, you'll uh, as you do, the more you do it, the easier it will become. Okay? So from here, uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is reinstall my bolt buffer. And if you have a factory one, it'll just probably fall right into there. All right. I'm going to need to give mine a little tap here. All right, there we go. And that should be sitting nice and flush. Now for your trigger mechanism, what I'm going to do is take a little bit of oil, put it on the face of the hammer, because as your gun cycles, your bolt is pushing back that hammer and rubbing against it. That's a big friction area in your side of your firearm. Okay. And uh, on your uh, trigger mechanism here, that's really the only place you need to put any kind of lubricant. Uh, I would advise, if you're using one of those aerosol degreasers, I would advise staying away from the trigger mechanism with that, uh, just because there's so many small parts that need to be re-lubricated inside of here, and you can't always, always get to it. Okay, without taking it completely apart. Uh, also, if you notice on the front of your hammer, uh, your trigger, if you're using the factory trigger, yours is going to look a little bit different than this one, that's okay. That's your sear engagement. That's where your trigger uh, is engaging your hammer. So if you put a little bit right there, it'll help out with that trigger pull just a hair, okay? All right, and that's all there is to it for the trigger mechanism. You don't need to pull all this stuff apart and do any of that for basic maintenance. And now we just need to drop this back onto the receiver. Now, as I mentioned before, this ejector kind of wants to flop around there. So I'm just gonna Hold it with my index finger as I rotate down. And then you can let go of it. And for this, we're just gonna take our pins, just line up the holes with the trigger to the holes in the receiver, and push these guys back in here. I'm gonna need to persuade this one a little bit. Get those pins nice and flush. If you're having trouble getting your pins in, uh, you can pull back on your bolt just a little bit, and oftentimes that'll help your trigger mechanism seat where it needs to be. And uh, we didn't have that issue here, but if you do, uh, that's the remedy for it, right? Okay, now we need to just, uh, at this point, just do a visual inspection on the outside of it, you know, wipe off any junk there. Um, I have some Looks like some dirt or something in the writing on my receiver. I'm just going to kind of scrub that out of there. Wipe it down. Just like that. All right. And to get this back into the stock, again, you got to put that safety in the middle position. Just like so. Then if you notice, there's a step this little cutout right here on the back, that's gonna key into a notch inside of your stock. So you gotta come back at an angle. Hook that back side in and then close down on your barrel. Just like so. And then from here, tighten that screw back down, nice and snug. If you're using a wrench like this, make sure you have clearance for that trigger there. All right, 
And if you wanna actually put a torque wrench on that, um, about 30 inch pounds will be just fine. Okay, now we need to do a quick function check. Make sure everything's working the way it should be. So what I'm gonna do is put my firearm on safe, turn that safety on, and cock that charging handle. This is spreading around that lubrication, right? All right, now with the safety on, pull the trigger. Nothing should happen, no click, no nothing. Turn the safety off. You should hear that click, that's that hammer falling. At this point, I'm gonna cock it, and I'm gonna pull that trigger again don't let go of the trigger, leave it depressed. Now we're gonna check the disconnector, okay? And what that, I'll show you what that is, is uh, the best way to tell you what it is is just show you what it does, okay? So with the trigger depressed, pull that charging handle back, let it go forward, and slowly let off the trigger, you should hear a click. That's your disconnector. So now it reset that hammer and sear so that you can now fire it again. So at this point, put it back on safe, Nothing should happen, and that's all there is to it. All right, so that is basic maintenance on the Ruger 1022 and BRN22 and pretty much all the clones. All right, if you have any questions or comments, uh, preferred cleaning solution, anything like that, and you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to drop them in the comments below. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call on the tech line. We'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.